Ja Moran is back, and it is great for the sport of basketball. Nothing better than breaking down his game. He had 22 points and 10 assists yesterday, 6 assists in the second half. He was creating for his teammates with ease, and he was crucial in the biggest moments of the game to squeeze out a victory on the road in the season opener. First points in his return comes off a Zach Eady screen. Immediately gets his initial defender on his back, and notice when he goes up, he goes straight up because he knows the rim protector is going to continue backwards. He also anticipates the contact from the recovering defender. He just hangs in the air after it and floats and won. I literally feel like I'm watching Steven Adams and Jaw all over again. Look at the space Edie creates with his screen. Then he does the Chris Paul dribble into the defender. Then notice Edie with the highway screen. He creates an easy layup for Ja, but he just smokes it. Don't worry though, Edie is there to clean it up. The Utah Jazz were petrified when Ja touched the paint. To start the play, he's selling the dribble handoff or screen, and he just goes the other way with the wicked between the legs. Now he has the edge driving left to the paint, and look, he has not one, not two, but three Jazz defenders clogging that paint. He then fakes to the perimeter just to throw the easy lob for two. And this is probably one of the craziest passes I've seen so far this season. Desmond Bain running off an Aldama screen. Then he's running off a Zach Eady screen. John Morant delivers this pass from the other side of the court on a rope. The accuracy was crazy. Just avoids Walker Kessler's length. And it's right in Desmond Bain's shooting pocket. And shout out Taylor Jenkins for the play because that was beautiful and also great execution by the players. Now the Jazz game plan was clearly disrupt John Morant with their length. Putting Taylor Hendricks on him. He's 6'9 with a 7 foot wingspan. And on this play, it's good defense, but just better offense. John Morant just kept creating contact forward on him. And as soon as he gets to his spot, lean backwards into the floater. I mean, you can't even see Ja because of the length and size of Utah. But still, it doesn't matter because of the incredible floater he has. And Zach Eady deserves a ton of credit for this three-pointer. He's not slacking. He's running the floor. Now they have to account for him cutting, and Ja reads the floor in point one second, realizing he has to deliver another cross-court pass. This time, he's a little offline, and because he made that read so quick, Conchar has enough time to adjust, and he does a great job at not letting the offline pass affect his shot. John Moran had his eyes set out on Jordan Clarkson on this play, forcing Jalen Wells to be a screener. They get the switch, and then it was just bully ball. And again, he floats in the air for so long as he releases the defenders already basically on the ground, so that contest ain't doing a damn thing. And when he decides to accelerate like this, good luck. The defender has no chance but to foul, and somehow, some way, he hits a floater from that long distance. And then, in crunch time, he showed up, 116-116, he gets to the spot he wants, that he's been getting to all night, and what does he do here? He's been shooting the floater, he's in the air at first, he's looking at the basket, then he looks to the perimeter, which frees his marking in and opens up the last place he looks, Santi Aldama cutting to the basket, that puts into perspective how long he can hang in the air. And then it's 118, 117. He's dribbling sideways and then quickly between crossover out of nowhere, rejecting the screen and it shifts the defender. He then skies in the air. Three Jazz defenders converge. Somehow he fits through everything to come out on the other side and basically just hand off a free layup to Aldama. But he's not done yet. They are up 122, 119. 45 seconds left. They need a dagger. He hits the in and out dribble. George tries to cut him off, so he counters with the insane behind the back. On top of that, he challenges the seven footer, and look, he goes up like he's going to finish with his right hand. So Kessler is contesting, thinking that. So when he contorts his body in the air to the left hand finish, the contest is nowhere to be found. He truly is a magician. I'm so glad John Moran is back. Let me know your thoughts below.